Margaret awoke, startled, a cold sweat clinging to her. She gathered her thoughts. Aged wood creaked, echoing through the quiet rooms. Near the house stood a shrine to Rhea Dana, goddess and daughter of the land, of Rhea and a being of comfort. Margaret sought answers. But the goddess did not speak. There was only the faint whisper of something dark, something hungry. The old seer's bones felt the weight of their age as she climbed. The only thought on her mind, has it begun again? John's mission would be a simple one. He was to investigate Rhea's greatest shrine. His mother presented him with a fresh divinity shard. From his brother came a newly sharpened sword. gave him a kiss, and his daughter's hugs were full of reason to return home safe. forgotten, a place of unimaginable beauty. It first appeared as sludge given life, slithering creatures, small and vile. Oh, my God. 
Impeding further progress, a battle was certain. itself. The corruption abated, leaving the shard cold in hand, dark in need of life. Before him was now one more dangerous than those that came before. Goblins, a familiar threat, albeit farther out than usual. Before him was sacred ground, left untouched in days gone by. Inherently violent and ill-bathed, the goblins were an unfocused but constant threat.
Remaining calm and collected, the shock of his heart skipping beats was concealed in expert fashion. Before him stood Linda, his eldest daughter, with bow and quiver at the ready, determined to do her part. Guardians were not beasts feeding, but monsters consuming, destroying others. They corrupted and distorted, creating even more hungry husks. daughter gathered their thoughts, their hearts heavier than before. How would they explain what they had witnessed? The ancient tree had been cut down. Together, father and daughter described the horror, the creatures dripping with decay that slithered into bodies stuck between life and death to bolster their ranks. Grandma Margaret confirmed what they all feared. It was the corruption, a cruel entity spoken of only with hushed voices, an ocean of darkness that flowed from the top of Mount Morta. And the Bergson's duty was to stand against this devouring deluge of death. Kevin was also eager to do his part in the family's fight, especially when his older brother Mark was off somewhere. He was as much a guardian of their mountain home as any of them. She stood. If they were to reach the summit and destroy this evil, as the Bergsons of old had done in the past, they would need the assistance of the sanctuary. Given to the Bergsons by Rhea herself, the sanctuary was a gateway to the mysterious lands around the mountain. Margaret pointed to the huge crystal at the center of the den, revealing their next task. To activate it and open the way to the source of the corruption. And once Rhea's three spirits are gathered on the grounds, the only gate to the top of Mount Morta will open in this chamber. By himself, or with the assistance of those who loved him, 
John needed to gather the three spirits from their lands. Without them, he would not be able to stem the flow of the corruption. of Anayadaya must be here, for she needs to be found. A celestial shard chipped directly from the ancient crystal in the sanctuary. It would be the Berkson's lifeline, a tether to pull them back home before death's fateful whisper.
energy flowed around the room. Before the hero, an object of the divine.
Love. Truly a divine emotion, especially during dark days. Love had motivated this mother to lay down her life for her cub. Not all in the caves were refugees. Some were just traveling merchants stuck in a bind. looking shopkeep dusted off his clothes and tipped his hat. He invited them to stop by his shop later, promising something for all adventuring needs. so willing to walk into their own tomb. The Bergson began to slip away, wondering if this was death. It was warmer than they expected.
They gasped for air as the celestial shard brought them back. A sensation no hero could become accustomed to. As she heard John and Linda describe their foray, thoughts rushed through Margaret's head. The corruption had amplified the creature's wickedness, and no longer were they part of the harmony of the Rhea. With the new threats looming, Margaret asked Ben to prepare his workshop. He would have to take charge of enhancing the warrior family's weapons and armor. Although in the safety of the Bergson's house, the young cub was not yet free from danger. Exhaustion racked the animal's body, its chest heaving for even the smallest of breaths. The family believed several plants found deep in the nearby caves combined together could serve to remedy the situation. Ben reached out to the familiar warmth of the forge. If they were to reach the top of Mount Mortar, their equipment would need to be of the highest quality. 